So today we're joined by Ian, who put himself inside a video game and even brought a backpack to life using TensorFlow.js. First though, Ian, tell us more about your background and who you are. Thanks, Jason. Uh, my name's Ian Charnas. My day job is running an innovation and makerspace center here at Case Western Reserve University called Sears Thinkbox. And then nights and weekends, I don a secret identity where I am making content on YouTube. Generally, I make a, a kind of a goofy, fun, zany invention, and then I will raffle it off, and the proceeds go to charities that I care about. Love it. That's really cool. And uh, what exactly did you create this time? I've got uh, two projects we're going to show off here. One is a uh, video game where you actually put yourself inside the video game. Instead of controlling it with a controller, you're going to control it uh, by moving your body, thanks to MoveNet. And the second one, we're going to see a an animatronic talking backpack um, that uses uh, face mesh. And it was sort of an, a, a comedian in the wild experiment um, that respected social distancing. So we have a talking backpack powered by a comedian sitting on a park bench talking to passersby. Amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So I think, you know, it's definitely time to see some demos. Can you walk us through those? Yes, definitely. Um, let's start with the punch out. So this is a video game I used to love playing as a child called Mike Tyson's punch out. This is Mike Tyson. He was impossible to beat. I didn't know anyone who had beaten him. But as you can see um, on the right um, on my screen, I've got uh, a webcam open and MoveNet is tracking my body and it's allowing me to control uh, my character, Mac, in the little blue shorts over there, uh, just by moving my body. So it ends up being a, a really exciting uh, way to play the game and also quite a bit of exercise. You can see me wearing a sweatband <laughs> there. It's, it's not for show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the debugging was quite fun there. You got a good workout. <laughs> Awesome. And um, I believe you're using MoveNet to power this, right? You mentioned that very briefly earlier. Yeah. So I'm using MoveNet to track it. And you can actually see the results of MoveNet in the little skeleton uh, that's superimposed on my body. Um, and it was really interesting to try to think about what the moves would be. So this video game, uh, thankfully, was made in a, a simpler era where controllers had a relatively simple number of buttons. Um, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System control pad had uh, really two or three buttons that are used in this game. There's A, B, and Start, um, and which is great for this kind of game because a game that has uh, 50 different moves would be hard to control with your body. Um, now, one of, one of the interesting details was that MoveNet, uh, as amazing as it is, doesn't have a way to process depth. It, it can't know whether I'm punching towards the camera. So I, I couldn't use this as a way to track the punches. Instead, if, if you take a close, close look, you'll notice that when I punch off to the right or the left, my little character, Mac, is going to uh, punch forward. This is the move that you perform in order to get Mac to do the punches you want in the game. There's also Duck, uh, the Star Punch, if you remember that, those of you who have played this on Wii or any of the other systems that have had Punch Out. Um, so it's really interesting to think about what movements of the body are going to translate to what movements in the video game. Now, if I remember correctly, you kind of leveled things up a little bit here by introducing some electric shocks. <laughs> Maybe tell us more about that one. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So um, every time I play a video game, I always feel like this character on the screen is getting hurt and nothing's happening to me, which is usually what you want to have happen. I don't want like a, a fireball blown into my face like you see in Street Fighter. But a question came up. Would you be a better player if there were stakes? If something actually did happen to you, when your character got hit in the game. Um, and uh, what I decided to do was to make a small electric shocking armband to deliver an electric shock to me anytime uh, my character gets hit on, gets hit on the screen. Um, and the way this works is I've taken out the little shocking mechanism from a kid's ele electric joy buzzer. So something that gives you a little shock, but we know to be generally safe. I, I didn't attach a taser to my neck or something <laughs> wild like that. Um, and it really does matter. When when I put this on, um, I've never been so alert in a video game in my life. And I really did perform better. I would be much more worried about losing the game there, for sure. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even one hit, you don't you want to avoid. So that's really cool. Um, is there a link people can try this out for themselves? Yes. You can actually play Real Life Punch-Out for free by visiting reallifepunchout.com. And all it takes is a computer with a web browser. You don't need a Nintendo you don't need a Wii, there's no fees, anything like that. I will suggest that you watch the tutorial video that's on that site before you just jump in and try to play the game uh, because you need to know what the movements are. 
the, the ways to move your body to get your character to move in the game. Guessing is not going to get you there. So watch that tutorial before you play. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to the backpack and how do you make that one? So this project is an animatronic talking backpack that's powered by Face Mesh. I'll just show you this little intro here. This is the introduction from one of my YouTube videos. Get out your 2020 apocalypse bingo cards. Who had talking backpack? <laughs> so let me, let me start to show you how this thing works. This is really cool. Um, this talking backpack is remote controlled and it's actually remote controlled thanks to face mesh. So let me show you a little screen share here. For anyone not familiar with face mesh, um, it does what you see. It, it puts all these tracking points on a face and it can track it with and without glasses. It has an incredibly high frame rate, uh, even in JavaScript and even in browser. So wouldn't it be great if you could use this technology to control animatronics so that instead of uh, complicated controls, you could just speak and emote with your face in the normal way that you do, and the animatronics would mimic your movements. So this is this is what's inside that backpack. This is the animatronics. We're seeing the business side. You see the eyebrows, which move, and you see the mouth, uh, which moves. And then on the right, you can see my laptop with uh, TensorFlow JS running um, face mesh, and you'll see me controlling the mouth and the eyebrows. That's so cool. I love seeing people combine things of hardware with TensorFlow JS because I, I think sometimes JavaScript devs forget that it's actually possible. How do you communicate with it? Is it Bluetooth or something like that or, or Wi-Fi? Ah, great hmm. question. <laughs> great question. Yeah. So it's an especially good question because I wanted to place a comedian in a park such that you couldn't see her. And right, the backpack right. is sitting on a bench, so it had to be wireless. So once I had this working, I had I had the idea to put this inside a park on a park bench, which you're going to see in just a second here, and have it be remotely controlled by a comedian. So here's this being installed in the park. You see there's no wires. There's kind of an obvious camera behind it, but <laughs> that's how we did it. Um, this is the park I installed this in in Cleveland. There's a comedian. She is uh, sitting next to the laptop, and whatever... Um, face movements she makes are, are recognized by the in-browser TensorFlow.js running face mesh. And then um, inside the browser, in order to connect this to hardware remotely, I have the browser talking over a serial port. Um, actually, at this moment, I'm, I'm blanking on whether I used um, web USB or web serial. Those are two different options. Um, so that I can send serial commands to an Arduino, which um, had a, um, a, a wireless link to an Arduino that's actually inside the backpack. And that Arduino uh, was responsible for controlling the movements of the servo and stepper motors so that the animatronics would then move. That was the, the flow of uh, information on that. I'm just curious, have you uh, considered using web Bluetooth low energy or something like that as well? Was that not suitable for this? Was it not high enough bandwidth for something like that? Yeah, um, the, the Bluetooth um, options for, for JavaScript are, are, are pretty robust and solid. However, this was at an outdoor uh, location with a lot of trees in the way, and trees oh, can okay. sometimes absorb yep. RF energy. And I wanted to have the comedian so far away that all you saw <laughs> when you're walking through the park was the talking backpack. So she's over um, 200 feet away. So I needed a, a pretty high power transmitter, and I, I just wasn't confident Bluetooth would do it. Fair enough. Thank you. That's a great answer. <laughs> um, so the other thing at this point is uh, how easy was it to kind of um, hook up face mesh to this backpack? Obviously, this is like a physical piece of hardware and face mesh has like, I think, 384 little key points there. Was it pretty much, you know, grab a, a few key points and then, you know, attach it to a servo or, or was there some more work involved there? Yeah, that's what I love about uh, these models that have been trained for TensorFlow is that they make the part that you, that me, that I, that I, the developer, think is going to be the hard part. They make that the easy part. It took me one day to um, write some JavaScript code that used uh, TensorFlow.js and Face Mesh to to draw the the tracking dots on my lips and my eyebrows, and then also to write a little uh, uh, applica application, a little web page with some JavaScript that could allow me to set thresholds. I need to, um, you know, set my brow low low threshold and then set my brow raised threshold so that the uh, later on the uh, software can actually interpret whether my eyebrows are up or down. And same thing with the mouth. 
And since it's um, running in the browser, it's so fast, I can do all sorts of math to scale it. So I didn't have to worry about the uh, comedian getting too close or too far from the camera and changing the specific X, Y coordinates because I can scale and look at things relatively. So um, nice. I finished yeah. that code in one day. The, the hardware Amazing. is always the hard part. <laughs> that took several months. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, awesome. I mean, I know people can't really try this one out for themselves as a backpack is very unique, but um, maybe there's a website to learn more about that whole process or a, a GitHub repo for the, the code side of things. Yeah, I include a lot of technical information in the YouTube video. And also, okay. uh, I hope that you want to check out the comedian uh, talking to people in the park. It's really pretty funny. <laughs> so you can visit my YouTube channel, youtube.com okay. slash Ian Charnas. Perfect. We'll put all those links in the description after the show for people to check out. So do go check those out afterwards. Um, so at this point, you know, you've made a lot of great projects. And I've got to ask you, what are your plans for the future? Anything in mind for TensorFlow.js? I actually started to work on another TensorFlow project. And this time, I don't want to use a TensorFlow trained model. I want to dig a little deeper and do something a little more challenging and challenge myself to actually um, dig into the guts of TensorFlow and do real AI. And without giving away exactly what it is, it's not obvious. It has something to do with the stock market. So follow me on YouTube to see that video. OK, that sounds very cool. I'll be tuning in for that one. So thank you so much, Ian, for being on the show today. And of course, to all the viewers watching, let us know what you think about these projects in the comments. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on the internet.